Welcome! In this video I will prove that the Dirac equation implies the Klein-Gordon equation. So what that means by the way and why it is important, it is because the that means that any solution to the Dirac equation will have its components also satisfy the Klein-Gordon equation. And that's going to be very very important. Now how do we prove it? Well, what we are going to do is multiply by the left the Dirac equation that I have on screen by basically the same thing, right? Except that we are going to change the indices here. So we are going to have minus, so that's one difference, and also have gamma mu, the mu, right? We want to make sure that we are aware that these indices are not nu. They are dummy indices here. And yeah, so this thing is what we're going to be multiplying by. And now we, well, just multiply through. So we have minus i gamma mu, d mu, minus m, and we have here i gamma nu, del nu minus m, psi equals zero. All right, so now what we're going to do is that we are just going to multiply, right? So this, time, uh, this times this, this times that, and so on. So nothing crazy here. So this is going to be, so the first one is i times i, we get a minus sign, which cancels out this minus sign. So we have plus gamma mu. Now be very respectful with the position of everything when we multiply in QFT. Only move them around when you are fully aware of how they commute or anti-commute. So I recommend that you don't change any positions until you are consciously thinking about it because otherwise you can make mistakes that can ruin hours of calculations so gamma mu del mu and then gamma nu del nu then we multiply by the next one so then we have minus i'm going to leave the m to the end i could put it in the beginning because i know that m is a scalar it, we can just commute it there's no problem with it but just in case i mean i just want to be very consistent so i'm going to leave it for the end and later move it around so, th sorry, this is gamma mu, del mu, and then m. Now, there is minus minus, so we get plus and an i. Okay, so we multiplied this by the 2. Now we multiply the minus m. So we get minus m i gamma nu del nu, and then we get plus m squared, and all of this is acting on psi. Okay, so now let's take a look at this. As I mentioned, we can move the m around, right? So I can write this m at the beginning, no problem. So we can just write this as plus m i. And I get rid of the m at the end, of course. Now, these indices are dummy indices. They are contracted. If I multiply through, they just disappear. The product between these two things is the same. I may as well call this mu, just to emphasize that they are the same. Right? It's the same multiplication, gamma 0, comma, gamma i times uh, delta 0, comma, uh, delta the delta i's. So it's, it's the same, but with a minus sign. So they cancel out. I am left with this now. Does the derivative operator affect the gammas in any way? It's fundamental that you know the answer to this. The answer is no. Why? because the gammas don't have any dependence on, on space or the fields or anything. It's simply a constant, right? So for that reason, I can now commute the gamma with our derivative operator, but only commute when you are aware of how they commute. That's one of the most classic mistakes people make when first learning QFT. So gamma mu, gamma nu, del mu, del nu. And then we have still plus m squared. Okay. Um, so we can kind of see that this is kind of going towards Klein-Gordon, but we still have these gammas and we need to get rid of them. There are no gammas in the Klein-Gordon equation. So we are now going to use a trick that is used extensively. So be very mindful of this. I know that right, Clifford algebra I know that the anti-commuter gamma mu gamma nu is gamma mu times gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu. This is something you should know at this point. If you don't know, tattoo it on your body, 
draw it in your wall. I don't care. You need to know this. Okay, very important. This is equal to two times our metric mu nu. And this, of course, is in, in a two by two space. Okay, so let's, um, this is implied when I'm doing this. Um, so, sorry, four by four, in a four by four. So this is implies multiplication here by a four by four uh, the unit matrix. Okay, so why is this important? Well, I have a gamma mu gamma nu. All right, so what I can now do is say, okay, I'm going to write what I had there like this. I have gamma mu gamma nu, and now I'm going to multiply it by two and divide by two. And then I leave everything the same. I have done nothing illegal. Don't call the cops on me. I have done nothing wrong. Now I'm simply going to write this out. So two times gamma mu gamma nu is simply gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma mu gamma nu. So I'm not doing anything illegal here. Don't call the cops on me. And there's a factor of one half in front. And then we have our del mu del nu plus m squared and well all of this times psi okay so now we are going to multiply through and I'm, I'm doing this step by step you could do this of course much faster but just in case i want to make sure that you understand every single step because it's important that you know these basics so one half gamma mu gamma nu del mu del nu plus gamma mu gamma nu del mu del nu and then we have plus m squared times psi equals zero so now take a look at this here well we could do, we could do this in any of them because they are the same but i'm going to do this on this so we have mu upstairs mu downstairs nu upstairs nu downstairs this means they are going to be contracting we're going to be summing over them we're going to be left with no indices at all once we are done that means this index is a dummy index or in yeah indices it it does nothing in in the end it doesn't matter what it's called so we may as well rename it right this is a common trick so rename mu is now nu and nu is now mu it doesn't matter because it doesn't really exist outside of this little expression. It is completely independent of what's going on there. But doing this will be very useful. So now be very careful. I am not commuting them. That's different. I am simply renaming d mu del nu plus. And now I have gamma nu, gamma mu, del nu, del mu, and plus m squared psi equals zero okay now i will commute <laughs> now i will see that del nu del mu is the same as del mu del nu why because they are simply spatial derivatives you can commute spatial derivatives so for that reason i'm going to now write this again and i'm doing this step by step one half gamma mu gamma nu del mu del nu plus gamma nu gamma mu and now i have del mu del nu plus etc right so now what i will do is that i will factor out my partial derivatives so i have one half gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu and i multiply by del nu del nu plus m squared psi okay so what is it that i have in here this you should immediately recognize if not don't worry it's a matter of practice but it, i want to emphasize the importance of this this is the anti-commuter of gamma mu gamma nu so that was what this was all about we were only always trying to get to this and now well let me continue writing this so now we can use the fact that this thing right here so we have one half this is two times the mate the sorry uh, the metric mu nu in a four by four space that is implied right 
times d mu d nu plus m squared and all of this acting on psi. And now finally, well, of course, these two cancel out. And g mu nu upstairs times d mu here, that's simply going to give us del nu, del nu plus m squared acting on psi. And this is, of course, equal to zero. And what we have here is simply the Klein Gordon, right? This operator here is going to be the Dalambertian plus m squared psi. So we can see that the Dirac equation does indeed imply the Klein Gordon equation. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon down here. Um, I have all my lecture notes over there, at least since I started doing it, so not from every single video, but I'm uploading them uh, currently. And also, if you want to request a particular topic, why not go to my Ablebees? I can't find it. <laughs> Jesus, okay. Go to my Ablebees, the link is up here. Um, I shouldn't struggle this much with it. Anyways, the link is up there. Uh, you can go to ablebees.com slash team slash Nick Hoyman University. And you can either start a petition or support an existing one. And that's a great way to support me and also make sure that I make videos on topics that you may need. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in another video.